Hello there comic book fans. I am back this week with six new comics. Uh, let's see, uh, only about, I think it was just under $20 this week. I like that. This, even with a $5 issue of Wolf number one, when I saw this show up in my email of uh, books that were pulled for me this week, I didn't remember what the heck it was because, you know, I had a, ordered a month ago. But um, Alice Cott, Matt Taylor, Lee Laridge are the writer. I remember I liked uh, Alice Cott. What do I read by him? Surface. I thought that was okay. The art looked all right in the preview I saw, too. can't remember what it's about. Something about Supernatural L.A. Cop. And um, it being... I saw the price. And so I... You know, looked at how many pages it was when I was ordering it, and it was double size. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'll pay four ninety nine for a double sized first issue. I'll go with that. So, uh, like I said, Supernatural, L.A. Cop. Other than that, I got nothing with this one. We'll see how it is. Next, we have the Ever Good Stray Bullets. This is Sunshine and Roses, number six. I don't know how long this is going, because I just saw, in pr the latest previews or something, I saw a number nine of Sunshine and Roses. I think the last one only went eight. But anyway, I'm, I'm with any stray bullets that's coming. Black and white, eight-panel grid, crime does not pay, except for those it pays for, and but everyone else gets ground up after a while. Um, let's, what's been happening in Stray Bullets? Same thing that always happens in Stray Bullets. We have our two main characters, the, uh, boyfriend-girlfriend. The girlfriend's a small-time criminal. The boyfriend's, a uh, just graduated high school, wants to be a college kid, but likes the girl too much. She's telling him he should go off to college and not get mixed up with her and her lousy crew. But, of course, you know, wouldn't be a story if he didn't get mixed up with her and her lousy crew. So Stray Bullets, Sunshine and Roses is all about those two, their romance, and being mixed up with a lousy crew. Check it out. Mind Management number 35. That means there's only one issue left. It also means I get to use the word penultimate. This is Mind Management's penultimate issue. And for those of you who don't know what penultimate means, it means the next to last of something. It's hard to believe there's a word for next to last of something. But there's also a word for being thrown out a window. Defenestrate. Don't want to flip through too much and spoil it for me. But remember, if you throw someone or someone out a window, they've been defenestrated. Who? I can't believe there was such a need for a word that that you couldn't just say so-and-so was thrown out a window. You, you needed a special word for it, and they, they invented one. But anyway, Mind Management, excellent book. Last issue had an excellent cliffhanger. I can't wait to see what happens in this issue, and I can't wait to see how the whole series ends. And next we have Five Ghosts, issue 17. I'm new to Five Ghosts. I think uh, issue 15 or so was my first issue. And it's a guy who's haunted by... Five different ghosts. Oh, there they all are there. He's got, who was that? Sherlock Holmes, Dracula, Genghis Khan, and I don't know who the other two were. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, looks like a Japanese guy in an archer, Robin Hood? Nah. Anyway, he's got five ghosts who can, he can use their advice and abilities. And I must say, the last issue of this that came out, the Five Ghosts special, I really liked. I can't remember who the artist was, uh, because it wasn't one of the it wasn't the normal artist in the book. It was a the artist did, just did a really good job. Um, the art was kind of very lyrical and fairy tale ish, at least in the way the story was told. It, was, it wasn't like highly detailed art or anything like that, but the way the story was told was 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 beautiful and wonderful. And the story itself was interesting, too. It was a five ghost flashback to, I guess there's, I can't even remember, what does he got? some special ring or something that the five ghosts are, like that I'm new to five ghosts, that are attached to, or some special amulet or something like that. And, you know, they flashed back a thousand years to the countryside of Europe somewhere, and someone else who had the ambulin, am, uh, amulet or whatever it is, and the five ghosts haunted them, or I don't so whatever this the five ghost special I really enjoyed. That's uh what I wanted to say, and I especially liked the art in the five ghost special, but we'll see how the regular series keeps on keeping on. 
And here we go with Egos number eight. This series has been very good. The second story arc I've enjoyed thoroughly. It's gotten more science fiction-y. The, the art is kind of uh, very European sci-fi influenced. A little Japanese, a little Disney by way of Japanese manga thrown in there too. But I'm very much enjoying the story. We're getting a lot of what makes this kind of uh, futuristic sci-fi galaxy tick and the relationships between different planets and old wars and stuff like that. Um, the covers have all been these featuring one character covers too. This is a, must be three characters in one. But they, I've actually liked this series of covers too and I usually don't like uh, just standing there covers. But the design and coloring has been nice on them. But anyway, check out Egos sometimes. Good book. And finally, we have Birthright, Issue 9. The giant Cyclops Sky Tiger attacking him. I, I must say, I'm not a huge fan of these Birthright covers, but the insides are very nice. Um, magical story about a kid who was kidnapped when he was a little boy. Now he's brought back to his family ten years later, and he's all grown up right there. But his big brother is still little. Ten years have gone by on the other world where a year has gone by on this world or some such thing. And the hero from another world, Big Brother, just might have a villainous influence going on with him. But the, like, the art is very nice. The story is interesting. They're building up the number of characters and they flash back to the other world and we get fantasy elements and real world stuff. And um, his little brother got shot two issues ago, or the big little brother got shot two issues ago, and now this guy is trying to save him with the help of some earthlings and all sorts of fun stuff. But anyway, Birthright, solid comic. Glad I started reading it. Now we'll give you a look at the background art. These are all uh, on 9 by 12 pages. These all became, I think I, I must have done these 10 or 12 years ago. I turned them into colored prints. I'll have to show those off sometime. Well, this is just one of my drawings of a whole lot of strange elements from a column holding it all up to a door we can enter but this is what I this this is what some of my drawing is about sometimes very designy very uh, surreal with lots of different elements in it and here's the other end of the spectrum for my drawing I like spirals too kind of a keep it simple I believe I turned this into a uh, print too at some point. I'll have to pull that out and show. I'll have to show my finished prints sometimes, but uh, lots of lots of ink lines, lots of spirals. And this one is all pencil. I believe I inked this at another time. Once again it's my uh, style where I'm doing lots of different little elements in it, sort of in a decorative manner. Even decorate her whole entire body. Um, this is a you know the opposite end from this one where I'm keeping it keeping it busy here. But uh, as I've as I've said in a previous video, complexity is just simplicity multiplied. So each individual element is fairly simple. That's just simple little elements. All put them all together, and you get complexity. But anyway, there's a quick look at stuff for the week, and uh, you guys have a good time out there.